Hi everyone, welcome to this Amplitude video. My name is Nicola, working as data analyst at Human37. And the objective here is to show to you how does the journeys chart work. And I'll go through the different sections and the two main ways of using it. Let's already start by selecting a starting point. If we select the page view, in our Pathfinder, it will show to us what are the different paths users have taken during their customer journey. You'll see that 60% of them went to the main landing page. So if we increase the amount of steps we want to have a look into, here you have the daily ad metric event triggering, 14% have already ended their session and so on. B this event being a bit fake, let's take a more specific one, which is an add to cart. We want to see if, how do they move on the website. So if we increase a bit like this, we see that whenever users add to cart, so with a starting point of 120,000 users, 36% of them view their cart and 20% of these users, or at least compared to the total of these, start their checkout process and only 2% are going to complete the purchase already. So this gives us quite some insights related to the user customer flow, but it may be a bit over overwhelming to use. This is why when you're using this kind of chart, we always recommend that you already have a business question that, that you want to have an answer to. In our case, let's say that I want to know what does insights users to add something to their cart. So this is, let's say, kind of a specific question. And I can say, instead of starting with add to cart, I can use ending with. And I simply want to look into where the users come from. So if we do it like this, we see that 40% of them have viewed a recommended item and that has pushed them or nudged them to add it to cart. Or 30% of them came from viewing item details or selling profile or even favoriting items. And this can already give us an overview of the previous steps that we could use before adding to cart. And it could be used as a basis to construct a funnel. If instead of using ending with, you want to see between two events what happens, it is also possible. I want to use add to cart as a starting event and complete purchase as the end event. So we now have defined an ending point. And we want to see events happening before the complete purchase as well. So we see that of course, they view the card, they've uh, started the checkout process. Some have viewed recommended item before completing the purchase and so on. Again, you need to have a clear objective and clear question where you want to have an answer to, as you can get quite quickly lost into this uh, quite complex chart. You can filter the add to cart if you want to look at specific cities. Again, you can use San Francisco, or you can of course use event properties as filters. If in this case, uh, I, I could use, um, an item ID, let's select all at the moment. You can also always use an event property for filtering purposes to define the first and last step. Here we are currently looking at user flows, the unique count of users, but you could potentially look at event totals. We recommend usually keeping the unique one because it makes more sense, especially as it, it is quite linked to the funnel process.
and otherwise the how the the event total behaves is that if we have five add to cards that lead to only one purchase it'll be counted as 20 percent in the context of event totals while a user that has performed once an add to card and again four times later on to complete the purchase if we look at it from an unique point of view it'll be counted as 100 percent conversion rate it's just that you need to map one add to card to one complete purchase in the, uh, in the context of event totals. You can also change the, the conversion timeline. Like this. So yeah, you can always do so. Let's put it back to one day. And you can group by property. Here I want to group by city. I want to see what happens. So it makes less sense. You, you should maybe group by item ID. It'll make more sense. Yeah, and now under consecutive events, you'll see that for this add to cart, the product ID was 89. And so this helps uh, in this context to give a bit more information by selecting the specific item ID, for instance. You can also exclude events by property as intermediate steps. So here I didn't pick a good example. Let's say view recommended item. Yeah, so here you have search for items as being a big event. And you see that, yeah, I've excluded view recommended item. And instead of excluding, you can also include only these paths that include checkout. As here. And the values change. Here you have 798. If you remove the filter, 12,000. And you can, of course, segment by specific users. Let's pick again the example of city, San Francisco. And we are only looking at users that live in San Francisco. If we take this back, we can change the timeline, the time range. And this is it for the Pathfinder. Let us move on to the journey map. And conceptually, it's quite similar. It's just that it has a more compact view. Again, the, the same path settings apply, same metrics all the same settings, it's just that it's under a, a different format. It gives you a more consolidated view on the situation, so it may be a bit more uh, easier to use. If we select complete purchase and select ending with, you can go back further into one specific uh, user path if you're interested in. For instance, I'm seeing here, so I'll hide this again. Users that have searched for items. Let's look at what has he done beforehand. Okay, he landed on the page. Okay, start a session, he logged in, complete the profile, and landed on the page. And you have also flags for who did not perform an event. Now, if you add a property to group by, well, let's select page view, page title.
now page views have the property here under so I'll maybe select another element let's select add to cart again instead of this let's say maybe different let's put city let's try again and here yeah, here you have an example so now you're specifying the city for this event so again i'll repeat the, the case in this context you still need to have a valid question and a specific one so that you're again not lost in the analysis but it could provide quite some good insights in terms of uh, what are the most common paths that users are using to complete the purchase and you could use it as a valid point for double checking on why do we have certain values in the funnel rather than maybe having higher or lower ones so yeah this is it for this video i hope it has helped you in any way and yeah thank you have a nice day